Hello everyone, JDEV Creator of the JDEV Entertainment Network has returned once again to give you precisely what you want, which of course would be more of me, because I'm in such high demand, and that's really all you need, by the way, giving everybody my latest edition of Talking Cubs, specifically Talking Cubs episode number 8, where we've been discussing the 2020, well, 2019 and the 2020 Chicago Cubs offseason, as well as the start of the 2020 regular season. But to all those of you that are watching this particular video, there's some things I need you to do. In fact, there's four things in no particular order, and you probably already know what those are. I need you to like, I need you to share, I need you to all subscribe, and I need you to comment. That's it. You know what helps me and the channel out, and it's greatly appreciated if you would do that. So like, share, comment. Subscribe again, no particular order, and uh, we'll be friends. <laughs> so, we are almost finished with the 2020 offseason. As we know, the Cubs haven't made a lot of moves, but I think the Cubs are going to be okay. Now, am I ready to call them World Series champions? No. But there are some people that are closely connected to the Cubs that do things like this that are predicting the Cubs to finish with 82 victories. And honestly, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think we're going to be an 89-94 to 94 win team, depending on what kind of production that we get. So let's kind of talk about the lineup and the staff and the back end of the bullpen and see where we are. So I think Kyle Schwarber will be great in left field. I think Jason Hayward, with possibly a platoon situation with Steven Souza, will be good in right field. And I really think Ian Happ will be the key. I think he's going to be our center fielder. I think he plays 150 games and puts up Dexter Fowler-like numbers. Now, I don't know about the on-base percentage, but I think he'll put up like home runs, double-digit stolen bases, maybe a few walks here and there. But I think Ian Happ will actually be the surprise spark plug of our offense, and he will be the leadoff hitter. I really think that. At third base, well, I think we'll have Chris Bryant, shortstop, Javi Baez. Second base, I'm not really sure who they're going to do. Rodel Garcia, Daniel Zgazzo, or uh, Nico Horner. Probably Nico Horner. I wouldn't mind seeing him get a little bit more seasoning in the minor leagues, but, I mean, you called him up already, so you might, have, might as well utilize him. First base, Anthony Rizzo. Catching, Wilson, Contre Wilson Contreras, and sometimes Victor Caratini. And then our pitchers. Let's let's go into those. So I think Kyle Hendricks will have a solid year. And also I think Hugh Darvish. If anything, if he duplicates what he did in the second half of the season, Hugh Darvish could finish with ace-like numbers, which we did not think was going to happen initially when we signed him and saw what he did initially with the Cubs. I think John Lester, he might not be an ace anymore of the rotation, but I think he's going to have a better year than he did last year. And he'll be a little bit better. A little bit better. And then we just need Jose Quintana to do something to finish with like a, a lower four or high three RA. If he can do what a good fourth starter would do, that would be great. Now, our fifth starter, we really don't know who it'll be. Tyler Chatwood, Alec Mills, uh, Albert Elzole. I'm not sure who will be the fifth starter. But they, if they can produce, or maybe a little bit of everybody. I think we'll be good in the rotation. And then I'm not going to cover the whole bullpen, but the back end of the bullpen, the very back end. I think we're set up for greatness. We have a lot of low-risk people that are in the bullpen, aside from our closer, Craig Kimbrell. Now I think Kimbrell will be better than he was last year. He'll have a full spring training, a full off-season thing, which I think he had a full off-season thing last year, but just... I don't know, not having a team for the first half of the year. Maybe that did something to him mentally. Who knows? But I know there's some games that Kimbrell pitched in last year that were non-safe situations that he did really bad in. And a lot of those appearances, I think there were two or three appearances like that. And that ballooned his ERA. Keep closers out of non-safe situations. They tend to do a lot worse in those. So I think Craig Kimbrell will be fine. He's not paid that much. Okay, $16 million is a lot. But for one of the best closures of all time, I mean, it'd be great to have Araldis Chapman back. But I think Kimbrough will do just fine as our closer. And I think he'll have a good season. And Cub fans will love Craig Kimbrough, I think. 
And then the big surprise, pardon me, is who the setup man will be. Rowan Wick, Kyle Ryan, Jeremy Jeffries. I think it's going to be Brandon Morrow. We signed him to a very low contract. I mean, if he's healthy, he does pretty good. Now, I don't expect Morrow to play a lot if he does play. I'm thinking 45 to 65 games, somewhere in there. But if he can be dominant again in a setup role, that's going to be a big piece. So I think we're okay in our bullpen, but let's let's reevaluate the lineup. So Schwarber, he's going to do just fine and left. Center, I'm telling you guys, Ian Happ is going to have a great year. Something, he's going to do better than Albert Almora, okay? And he's going to do about what Dexter Fowler did. Maybe not as high as an on-base percentage, but if he can do like 350 for on-base, hit close to 20 home runs, steal 20 bases, draw, you know, however many walks, I mean, I think he's going to be a good asset. I don't know if I like him in center necessarily, but that's where he's going to play because that's where we have a spot open for him. And uh, I think he's doing it, going to do good. And then, like I said, I think you're going to see some sort of a platoon with Jason Hayward and Steven Souza. Or maybe Souza spells Kyle Schwarber when there's a really tough lefty that uh, Schwarber doesn't do well against. But I think Souza is a key, too, because last year, or going into last year, who was our fourth outfielder? I mean, our starters were Schwarber, Almora, and Hayward. But who was the guy that was tagged as the fourth outfielder? Was it Ben Zobrist? I think Stu Steven Souza will be much better as a fourth outfielder, so we don't have to rely on Albert Almora. Who I like, but he didn't have a great year the second half. I think he did okay the first half, but once that you know that that infant or well, it wasn't an infant that girl got hit with the foul ball, it was like all downhill from Albert Almora. I hope he bounces back, but I'm not expecting him to. So I think we're good in the outfield. I really do. It would have been nice to have Nick Castellanos, but to pay him that much money for a couple of years at least, when we have a guy in the minors, Brennan Davis who's going to come up and be on fire, I think. Probably won't see him this year, but we could see him late next year. I think he's going to be good, and I think he can play any outfield position. So I think we got something in the, the minors there. And then I think the infield. Now, there's been a lot of rumors, and we keep hearing this Colorado Rockies deal for Nolan Arenado. You know what? I'm going to go on a limb and think, say that I hope the Cubs do make a trade with the Rockies. If we can unload Jason Hayward's contract and get rid of a, not necessarily a disgruntled Chris Bryant, but a guy that has not re-signed with us when we offered him a new contract and he has an agent like Scott Boris, he's going to want 230 240 250 million. Why not just get the best third baseman in the game that's good offensively and defensively, hits you 35 home runs, drives in 100, run, or 100 runs a season, I wouldn't mind Nolan Arenado at third. And plus, he's much, much better defensively than Chris Bryant. If we can get him, he's already signed. I mean, his contract's high. He does have an opt-out. But to have him instead of uh, you know Chris Bryant that might want to leave, might as well get something for Bryant at this point instead of waiting when he's not worth as much. And then, of course, we got Bias. He's good. Second base, I would be all for if they're doing really good, if they win right away, to try to get Francisco Lindor. He might not play second base. He might play shortstop and move Javi to second. But Lindor, I think, would be a good asset to the Cubs because he would fill our second base need, or Javi would fill it. But he would also fill a leadoff hitter need that we do need. Rizzo, he's got first base locked down. Catching, we actually have lots of good candidates for catcher. Obviously, our two major league catchers, Wilson Contreras and uh, Victor Caratini, I wouldn't mind them to trade Carrot, uh, uh, Contreras and some trade to the Indians for Francisco Lindor if we can, because I would really like Lindor. And I think uh, Contreras at this point is expendable, even though he's great at catcher. But with all the catchers we have in the minors, plus Caratini, how good he was last year, we can re-sign like an old veteran, maybe Lucroy. I think we'd be good there. So the bench, you know, you got Steven Souza, David Bodie, Robel Garcia, Nico Horner, possibly. Daniel Descalzo. Alberto Morrow, maybe. He probably wouldn't even make the team. And uh, I think we'll be good. I really do. I honestly think this Cub team is great. And we kind of retooled our like strength and conditioning 
And then we, you know, we re replaced Joe Madden with David Ross. I think Ross is going to get the best out of these guys. I really do think we're an 89 win team. Now, I don't know if we're a playoff team yet, but we could get there. I know we lost Cole Hamels. I know we lost Nick Castellanos, but I really think guys like Ian Happ, maybe Nico Horner, and I think a really big year from maybe like a Schwarber, Rizzo, Bryant, Baez, you know, a, a, a little bit of a bounce back from John Lester, a really solid year from Hugh Darvish, a nice comeback year for Craig Kimbrell, a consistent year by Kyle Hendricks, who has pitched in some of the biggest Cub games in recent memory and done really well in them. I think we're going to be okay, and that's what I'm trying to point out to Cub fans. Will we be a World Series team? At, with this roster, no. But we could make some changes. But I think we're going to be okay. I think we're better than an 82-1 team and better than a fourth-place finish in the Central. And that's what I got to say about that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment. And J-Dev will be back again soon with another. Peace.